is Austin Blau. I'm a music composer for games, uh, interactive media, all sorts of stuff, really. And Kevin Manthe and Triumph Audio had sent over Ghost Cello for me to basically try it out and, you know, see my opinions on it and write a track with it. And so that's exactly what I did. I wrote a track called Reverence, which is not on the top there at all because <laughs> I named it after. So instead it just says Ghost Cello. Rightfully so. So I thought I would go through a walkthrough of the track and show you through my workflow. So best way to start would be just to start. So you can already tell, it starts off with some pretty cool patches, and really it's just one patch, which is this Delta Landing patch, uh, which I love. It has a lot of character to it. And all I'm really doing to it is just basically adding a little bit of compression uh, on the output section, which really, you'll notice a lot of what I did was pretty minimal stuff. It's usually reverb and delay and a little bit of compression, sometimes a little bit of EQ in here or EQ after the fact, just because it's easier for me to see it that way. Usually messing with like the initial amp envelope, but a lot of it was really just the patches themselves. And that's kind of what I personally really like about the library. The library itself and the, the virtual instrument is really inspiring. So when I load up a patch and I just hit anything, honestly. There's just so much that comes from that. These are really like nothing else I've ever used before. Uh, and that's what's so fun. <laughs> so I, I love using it because every patch is just so inspiring which for me is most important. That way when I'm sitting down, I'm not doing sound design, I'm trying not to mix. Uh, I'm really just trying to write off of a lot of things. But then the engine itself allows you to do whatever you want with it, which is kind of crazy. Like I barely even scratched the surface with the rhythm engine at all. Honestly, like a lot of this goes so far in depth, it feels like a synthesizer. It's definitely more than just a cello library and more than just a library that's just relatively interesting. You can make it do whatever you want, which is why I've broken down a lot of what I did here into rhythmic tracks, weighted tracks. I mean, the entire piece is obviously all written off of just Ghost Cello. There's no effects plugins at all. Like you can see on my mix window, a bunch of channel EQs, uh, some other EQs on here, and then just a master section, which is really just EQ basically slight saturation in EQ, um, multiband compression, because I can't live without it, <laughs> uh, more EQ, uh, a limiter, and uh, really just a way for me to see what's going on with the track itself. You know, this just kind of gives me an overview idea of everything. Besides that, this is all just directly all 42 of these tracks which for me is surprising because I normally write uh, a lot more than that. <laughs> I think that's more of a crux than it is a, I write a lot of tracks. It's more, uh, I need a lot of tracks <laughs> to, for it to sound the way I want it to. So, um, so yeah, be between all of this, uh, a good way to start would be to showcase the rhythmic tracks. So what I start with as like an intermission, as a lead-in, is the ricochet patch, which is probably my favorite patch on here. It's definitely top three. It's really, really cool because it, I mean, it's really inspiring. <laughs> I 
obviously I'm adding a lot of other stuff on here and I've EQ'd it because it has a very specific purpose in this instance. What you'll probably see here when I close a few of these and I stretch this out a little bit is that I use ricochets a lot. <laughs> so I'm just using a time-based delay obviously as a way to get a rhythmic sound, like a triplet sound essentially, over this 4-4 four, four piece. So, it worked out well. <laughs> Is that so? Uh, and so after that, these uh, Kalenio patches, these like ping pong patches. I'm basically just playing the same note, which is really low, and I am just using some compression and reverb and delay, and then the convolution reverb as well. Kalenio is really fun to play with, honestly. Any Kalenio patches. Um, but in this instance, obviously, I'm using it more like a percussive instrument, um, which is a lot of times what it's used for, but I'm, I really tried to make it more of um, like a, a wooden block kind of sound in, in a way. So it almost works like a clock in a way, which is almost cliche for a composer right now, but it is fun. It works very well for the piece. And yeah, I liked how it sounded. So past that, there's a few other sections here, like this looper drone I'm using as kind of like a low end hit. Really just added a low pass onto that. Um, I don't think I did anything else to it compression. The transient designer isn't really being used. That's all I needed to really do. Just got rid of a lot of extra parts to it and just threw it on. It worked really well to, to be like an initial hit sound, especially when I used a lower note. And I think the same thing here, this is kind of almost similar to the Colenio patch. I think it actually is the Colenio patch. You know, that would make a lot of sense. <laughs> so it is the Colenio patch. Yeah, just these little small hits in the beginning to not be so abrasive when everything comes in, especially since there's more of a lead in. I wanted there to be a uh, an initial hit, but I didn't, you know, to uh, signify that there will be rhythmic elements. It sounded a little too strange when it was uh, too apparent. So. This is going in place of that, which is why you're only seeing it right at the beginning of each of these sections, essentially. So we can move to the weighted tracks, which is taking up the brunt of a lot of this beginning section. Um, I'm using a lot of these as a way to add a little bit of texture, um, but more depth and dimension to the piece. Once again, not really doing a whole lot to it, really just using the patches as they're made, essentially. And I mean, this whole beginning section really is just one note <laughs> each way through. It's very, very basic. So I did use this patch Just another way to add texture, again, on top of all of these different parts. The ricochets, once again, I loved this patch. It's just so fun. There's so much going on there. Um, and I think that's part of the realism of the library, is it feels so useful in that regard. So I, I love using that. It's what I'm gonna be using in the future for a lot of other things. So yeah, I, I, uh, it added a lot for me personally in here. And then my lazy mixing, you know, I do a lot of automation, um, but 
sometimes I don't feel like doing automation <laughs> when I'm just trying to raise one piece of track just by a little bit. So, funny enough, I, uh, well, I was kind of doing a little bit more here, so I guess that, that still tracks, but there are other parts here where you'll see duplicates of the same thing going on, and it's just because it's easier for me to basically just duplicate the track and then raise the volume and then move on rather than try to automate for each time I switch. It's just quicker. Um, so, lazy mixing works well. <laughs> kind of almost like the room tone in my mind of this section of the piece, this dark lullaby drone. There's just so much in here that I only had to use one note. And that's kind of indicative of a really good virtual instrument for me, is if using one note is inspiring enough to not overwrite, I'm in love with those. And it doesn't mean that you have to um, have something that plays for you when you hit that one note. Um, it doesn't have to be like a rhythmic sequence that does everything for you or um, something that's playing chords constantly, but to have something that is at least inspiring and has this kind of character to it, where when um, really playing something extremely basic is inspiring and feels like enough, those are my personal favorite, at least for writing even for mixing as well, but especially for writing when I'm trying to avoid, you know, constantly feeling like I have to add more. It always feels better when I can subtract. Like, I don't think I've written a track with 42 instances in a long time. Most of the time, I'm usually at, at least 80. Uh, it's usually 60 to 80 for like a lot of the metal stuff I've written which is usually the most basic, because it's usually just some guitars, bass, and drums, so you'd probably think, well, why is there 80 tracks? But a lot of that's just because of my non-automation mixing. <laughs> it's also just because I add so many elements and layers, and I'll have different kinds of guitar tracks, and you know, there'll be like 20 guitar tracks on there, so it ends up making sense, but um, <laughs> at least to me. But yeah, so it's incredibly inspiring. From there, we can switch to ambiences. Which is more like textures to me personally. So once again, delay reverb. Um, I am doing a low pass filter on this. And I'm boosting some of the resonance, not just cutting off. It just basically showcasing a specific frequency. Um, honestly, I don't know if I can explain it very well as to why I like that. It just made sense, uh, and I think it sounds pretty good. That's the only reason I need. <laughs> is a different part that is labeled as octave. Oh, I see how I'm doing it. Yeah, that makes sense. I forget how I do it sometimes. Once again, there's just a lot of texture here. And also, once again, lazy mixing. <laughs> After that, uh, this pad, this dark repeats pad. Uh, I had a little bit of chorus, uh, some reverb, probably, com oh, no compression. I'm tricking myself here. Low pass again. And uh, I think this is the antitian. 
the anticipation drone, if I can say it correctly. Anticipation drone. There was some anticipation. Something just basically coming in and out. Because once again, if everything was just on and everything was off, variation is key. So, after that, then it's basically this last part here. Which almost has more of a synthetic quality. And I mean, this whole engine uh, works almost like a synth. So then, besides that, uh, we can go to this last section here. So, in all honesty, I didn't really add too much to it. It's still the same stuff that was going on before. Actually, I'll show you this rhythmic piece first, the other piece that's added in. So obviously it was something that kind of sounds percussive and metallic, and that is a totally different type of patch that you wouldn't really expect. I'm basically just pulling the release off a little bit. I messed with the attack so it wasn't too heavy on the attack side, just to kind of have a better spread than just an initial transient, which I could have done with the transient designer on the end here, but either way works. I added a little bit of distortion to help out with some of that spread, uh, reverb and delay just to make it feel like it's a little bit more in a room, and then EQ to cut a little bit out and boost a little bit, just as certain ways of making it sound a little bit more percussive. I mean, we could check it out with and without. It's pretty dramatic, but it helps. The other thing I'm doing to it is I'm just taking out a few notches, really to make it sound more atonal than tonal, um, just to really make it sound more like a percussion instrument. And then basically just taking out just some more mid-tones, which kind of has more of this like covering sound to it. So it just kind of can fall in the background a little bit. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much that. The other stuff in there is where I actually add some chords. Ooh, it's like one note basically all the way up until this section, so. It's not even anything complicated. Very, very basic. So yeah, I was using the Dawn Rising pad, which is basically just adding, um, I added a little bit of distortion on the pad. Uh, it's not too much, but it just adds a little bit more texture to it, which is nice. Helps it stand out a little bit more. That's pretty much it, and just kind of let it run. And then I also... put on these octaves for this fifth lament patch as well. Which sounds more like a synth to me which really helps this section just kind of pop out of nowhere. And then the other part of it, which is pretty apparent, is the high altitude double pad. Nothing crazy, just pretty basic melody going on here. The pad itself, I basically just added uh, some distortion to it, some saturation, a little bit of reverb, probably compression. Of course, there's compression. There's always compression. <laughs> uh, not always, but sometimes. The EQ is on, but I'm not really doing anything to it. Same thing with the transient designer. And I mean, yeah, the, the patch kind of speaks for itself. It's very um, ambient in a way, uh, very epic, large, essentially. It's, it's pretty massive. And then I just add an octave on top of that, 
and a different patch following that as well. And just taking out some notches from that. Besides that, uh, I added some ricochets at the end. And they just tend to help weighten up. Yeah, maybe it should have been in the weighted tracks then, I guess, but it helps to just beef up a little bit at the end, uh, which is really nice. And that's pretty much everything I did in here. Thank you very much for sticking around, and obviously thank you very much to Kevin and to Triumph Audio for uh, sending this over and, and um, asking me to write a track. It was really, really, really fun. <laughs> this is now definitely a staple for me when it comes to virtual instruments. I'm just in love with this instrument. It's really, really fun. So I highly recommend checking it out. It's honestly just like a new piece of the tool belt for me, personally. So I can't recommend it enough. I hope you enjoy it because it's it's really fun and it feels like this secret area you stumble onto. So if it's half as inspiring as it was to me, as it will be for you, or as it you know is for you, then that is uh, that's a wonderful feeling. So yeah, hopefully you check it out. And yeah, take care. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>